Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. That's pretty darn good. The first service was, eh, they were quite awake that maybe, but, but Hallelujah.
that fills us with joy and gets us excited so that all we can do is shout out, Alleluia, Christ is risen.
just live a good life and, and do these right things, follow the commandments, God's going to bless you richly with all kinds of wealth and happiness and health. And then there's just the other side of the coin where we go out to proclaim this gospel to a world, to a small wall of, of just apathy. Right? So we suffer as a church as we try to proclaim this message of God's love. And as we endure the pain of the changes, I think out of our, out of, out of our suffering, the, the church will endure and a new church will arise. A church that will become better is sharing that same message of God's love in a kind of a different way, a new way, a way that a whole new generation of people who, who see the world through the lens of, of technology, the world who communicate by tweets and, and text messages and all that kind of stuff. God's Word will still use those tools. Pastor Justin, I think, is really good about that. He has a blog, he does kind of email stuff, but he has, he's found ways to share the story of God's love with a whole group of people who probably would never come into this church, who probably would not otherwise be exposed to that message of God's love. And yet, because of the way that, that he is using technology, he and others are using technology, this word of love is still being out to the people in a way that the people can understand. The thing is, that no matter what kind of struggles the church endures, no matter what kind of chases and changes that we experience and struggle with, the church will always be. Because it's not our church. It is God's church. And as we said before, God's love will neither be thwarted nor killed off. God's love will continue to come to us in many various ways. Ways that everybody across the generations will be able to understand. And one of those ways we will experience today is we come to this table. This table where we will eat and drink the bread and the wine, the body and the blood of Christ, given and shed for you, for me, and for all people, so that we will know that we are loved and forgiven. And as we eat and as we drink, the Spirit of Jesus actually becomes part of who we are. It infuses our very soul. It's, it's as if the Holy, God's love is poured into us through the Holy Spirit, that we can be strengthened to step back out into the world and to continue to share that, that message of God's love, to continue to carry out that mission, that seemingly impossible task that God has called us to do. Not as a people, people, but as a people who do so with hope, knowing that we don't do it on our own that God is with us each and every step of the way. And that we say, thanks be to God.